Chapter 10, Place and Development of Channel Systems from Essentials for Marketing. During this lecture you will understand what product classes suggest about place objectives, understand why some firms use direct channel systems while others work with intermediaries and indirect systems, understand how and why marketing specialists develop to make channel systems more effective, understand how to develop cooperative relationships and avoid conflict in channel systems, know how channel members and vertical marketing systems shift and share functions to meet customer needs, understand the differences between intensive, selective, and exclusive distribution, know the main approaches firms use to reach customers, in international markets, and a whole bunch of new terms. So, when managers think about place, they are concerned with making goods and services available in the right quantities, right locations, when customers want them. Place is the part of the marketing mix that deals with making goods and services available in the right quantities and locations when customers want them. Channels of distributions are any series of firms or individuals participating in the flow of products from producer to final consumer among the key strategy to decision areas in distribution are the organization must develop the objectives for place, there must be a choice of the ch type of channels such as direct to customer or indirect which involves many intermediaries. If the chosen channel is indirect the marketer must determine the degree of market exposure if desired. In addition the marketer must decide on the types of intermediaries needed how often, how many of them are needed, and how to manage them. The type of channel is also related to the level of customer service required by the target customer. And finally, physical distribution activities must be developed and managed in order to achieve the distribution objectives. Customers may have different needs with respect to time, place, and possession as they make different purchases. Product classes suggest place objectives. Different levels of customer urgency, convenience, and product information needs naturally suggest different place needs as well. The place is not automatic. More than one place arrangement may be appropriate or needed to reach different target markets effectively. Place decisions have long run effects and are usually harder to change than those made for other components of the mix. In part, this is because other firms in the channel distribution may carry out much of the place strategy and gaining access to desired retail space or outlets typically involves a great deal of time and then is bound by contractual agreements. Marketing channels can be direct or indirect. Direct contact with customers helps a company keep abreast of market changes. Often this is a preferred way of handling place decisions. However, some products require the work of specialists to match producer output to user needs. Why a firm may want to use direct distribution? One reason is to get better control over the whole marketing job. They might be able to serve target customers at a lower cost. Also wholesalers and retailers with different objectives may not meet the firm's needs. The internet makes direct distribution easier for many firms. A firm having direct contact with customers is more aware of changes in customer attitudes. Making adjustments is often easier and faster because intermediaries are not involved. Sometimes suitable intermediaries are not available or will not cooperate. 
Many business products are sold direct to con customer. For example, this robotic solution featured in this ad for Fonhook Robotics might be sold direct. In business markets, there are fewer transactions. Orders tend to be larger, and customers tend to be concentrated in geographic areas. Once relationships are established, e-commerce systems can handle routine replenishment. Service firms also frequently use direct channels. However, some producers use intermediaries to provide after-sale services. Some consumer products are sold direct, such as vacuum cleaners, cosmetics, and household markets. Direct sales of consumer products have grown in popularity in many international markets. Direct communication between a seller and an individual using a promotion method other than face-to-face -face selling is direct marketing. Direct marketing is more concerned with promotion than it is with distribution. Even if a producer would like to handle the whole distribution job, sometimes it is simply not feasible. Consumers want convenience. For example, in this ad from Celestial Seasonings, organic tea, consumers may be spread over a wide area and prefer to shop at a specified place. Some consumers see department or retail stores as the place to shop for consumer products, and they will buy only those brands carried by their favorite store. Convenience is a major reason why so many consumer product producers rely on direct channels. So let's check our knowledge. Andrea's Kitchen is a catering business that operates by means of its own website. Customers order party platters, pastries, and other foods that the company makes to order. The items are then vacuum packed in dry ice and shipped to the customer's address via overnight delivery. Andreas Kitchen is a direct channel. Web-based e-commerce systems give many firms direct access to customers. And this website allows customers to place orders and provide information so that Andreas Kitchen can ship directly to them. So, Andreas Kitchen is an example of a direct channel. This assortment and quantity of products consumers desire may be different than the assortment and quantity of products offered by producers. Considerable distances may separate producers and consumers. Customers may not be adequately informed about product choice. Channel specialists have evolved to deal with these market separations and discrepancies. Intermediaries may supply needed information to consumers and bring buyers together with sellers. Intermediaries can take advantage of their understanding of customers to predict consumer needs and develop accurate demand forecasts. So this information can reduce channel costs, smooth out production runs, and permit easier access to international markets. Intermediaries can help to rectify discrepancies of quantity and assortment. Discrepancy of quantity, which is the difference between the quantity of products it is economical for a producer to make and the quantity that consumers or users really want. In this ad, Tesco, the large UK supermarket, utilizes Emerson to deliver the freshest foods available to its customers. Emerson serves as an intermediary assisting Tesco with adjusting discrepancies of quantity and assortment. A discrepancy of assortment is the difference between the lines of products a producer typically makes and the assortments final consumers or users want. Like discrepancies of quantity, intermediaries are equipped to deal with the discrepancies of assortment. So in this ad, Campbell's specializes in producing soup as its major product line. 
However, consumers purchasing food items typically want to buy other things besides soup during a trip to the grocery store. Food wholesalers and retailers adjust this discrepancy by bringing assortments of different types of foods to consumers. The need to resolve discrepancies of assortment can lead to a complex web of relationships involving many firms. Regrouping activities are activities that adjust discrepancies in quantity or assortment. Channel specialists adjust quantity discrepancies by accumulating and bulk breaking. Accumulating is the collecting of products from many small producers. Bulk breaking is the opposite. It's the dividing the larger quantities into smaller quantities. Smaller, several levels of a channel may be involved. Wholesalers and retailers adjust assortment discrepancies by sorting and assorting. Sorting is the separation of products into the grades and qualities desired by consumers. Assorting is putting together a variety of products to give a target market what it wants. Even without a physical form, distribution remains an important marketing strategy decision for firms with digital products. It is important for marketers to watch for changes needed in assortments and quantities as consumer needs change or as the marketing environment shifts. The objective here is showing a graphical example that indicates how adding a wholesale level can in fact reduce total transportation costs in the channel of distribution. So let's say there are 50 manufacturers and 800 retailers in a channel system. The total transaction costs in a channel system with no wholesale level is computed and compared to the total transaction costs in channels that contain one or two wholesalers. Just as intermediaries are specialists in certain areas, they are also separate businesses that may not have the same objectives as the marketer of the product. The marketing manager must choose the type of channel system to join or develop. The whole channel should have a product market commitment. All members must focus on the same target market at the end of the channel and share the various marketing functions in appropriate ways. Traditional channel system is when members make little or no effort to cooperate with each other. Channel specialization can lead to conflict that gets in the way. Vertical conflict is conflict between two firms at a le different levels in the channel of distribution, as between a producer and a wholesaler. Horizontal conflict occurs between two firms at the same level in the channel of distribution, such as two retailers. Managing channel conflict is when some level of conflict occurs, or even useful, if that is, is what it takes for customers at the end of the channel to receive better value. Most marketing managers try to avoid conflicts that harm relationships with channel partners. A channel captain is a manager who guides channel relationships. The ch captain helps direct the activities of the whole channel and tries to avoid or resolve conflicts. Although it is often the case that producers assume leadership positions in channels of distribution, powerful intermediaries may also serve as channel captains. In recent years, it has become more popular for intermediaries to take on this role. So here you see an example of how a producer-led channel might operate. The producer develops the product and the price structure, but relies mainly on intermediaries to help with distribution and promotion. Wholesalers or retailers 
might also be channel captains either because of their size or their proximity to consumers. So in this case the intermediary takes on all of the place and promotion functions and part of the pricing and product functions. A retailer or wholesaler might get involved with product and pricing but by developing dealer brands. When intermediaries are large and wheel channel power because of their size, they can influence the structure and processes in the channel. Large retailers buy in such large volume from producers that they often bypass wholesalers and deal with the producers directly. They also secure volume discounts from producers. Compared to a traditional channel, in a vertical marketing system, the whole channel focuses on the same target market at the end of the channel. Corporate channel systems are characterized by the ownership of each level of the channel by the same corporation, given the appearance that the firm is going direct. Vertical integration is when buying of other firms by one member of the channel occurs. Any level of the channel may become the acquiring corporation. So in an administered channel system, channel members informally agree to cooperate with each other. Such agreements typically cover procedures to routinize ordering, standardize accounting, and coordinate promotion efforts. Contractual channel systems are when channel members formally agree to cooperate via contracts. Many popular franchise systems are example of contractual channels. And then vertical marketing systems are a dominant force in the marketplace. In fact, they capture majority of retail sales and should increase their share in the future. So let's check our knowledge. Dave Tyndall runs Made to Perfection, which is a residential and business cleaning service. He paid a fee to be part of the Made to Perfection system of local operators. The written agreement gives him the right to use the company name and operations manual, and the agreement promises Dave that there will be another Made to Perfection operator in his immediate area. He operates as a semi-independent entrepreneur, but is still part of a national organization. Dave is part of a contractual channel. In contractual channel systems, channel members agree by contract to cooperate with each other. So here Dave owns a franchise of Made to Perfection. Most franchise systems are examples of contractual channels. I ideal market exposure makes a product available Weak, widely enough to satisfy target customers' needs but not exceed them. Too much exposure increases marketing costs and such inefficiency is detrimental to both the firm and the customers who ultimately pay more for products. Intensive distribution is the selling of the product through all responsible and suitable wholesalers and retailers who will stock and or sell the product. This exposure is particularly appropriate for convenience products because consumers do not want to expend a lot of effort to find them. Selective distribution means sell it where it's best and it's selling only through those intermediaries who give the product special attention. This exposure is typically associated with shopping products. Selective distribution can reduce costs and get better partners. Selective distribution gets special effort from channel members and selective distribution often moves to intensive as the market grows. Exclusive distribution means selling only one intermediary in a particular geographic area. Exclusive distribution sometimes makes sense, especially when dealing with specialty products.
So let's check our knowledge. Chocolate Dreams is a manufacturer of expensive, high-quality, handmade, old-style candies that are sold through fine department stores and certain bookstores and fine gift shops. The ideal market exposure for products manufactured by Chocolate Dream is selective. Selective distribution is selling through only those intermediaries who will give the product special attention. Companies commonly use selective distribution to gain some of the advantages of exclusive distribution while still achieving fairly widespread market coverage. So Chocolate Dreams is using selective distribution. Exclusive distribution is an area considered under U.S. anti-monopoly laws. Courts currently on the currently focus on the potential harm to competition in answering the basic question, is limiting market exposure illegal? So horizontal arrangements among competitors are illegal. These arrangements exist among firms at one level of the channel. They are considered to be collusion that reduces competition and harms customers. Vertical arrangements may or may not be illegal. These arrangements exist across different levels of the channel. Courts weigh the possible good effects of these arrangements against the possible restrictions on competition. Firms should be cautious about entering into exclusive distribution arrangements. The courts can force companies to change long-standing channel structures and pay large damage awards. Channels of distribution can involve a complex set of relationships among many organizations. This chart shows an example of a channel arrangement for a publisher of computer books. Books pa pass first to the wholesale level, either to general book wholesalers or wholesalers of computer accessories and supplies. The general book wholesaler resells to online retailers or to other independent bookstores. The computer supplies wholesaler distributes to electronic superstores or large bookstore chains. However, there may also be some direct sales from the publisher's website to provide adequate coverage. Multi-channel distribution occurs when a producer uses several competing channels to reach the same target market. Ethical decisions may be required to deal fairly with all channel members across all channels. Environmental factors can cause the development of reverse channels, channels used to retrieve products from consumers. A comprehensive distribution strategy means that reverse channels must be planned for in the event they are needed. New laws require reverse channels in some industries. Reverse channels are sustainable and profitable. Plan for reverse channels. All the strategy decisions for place apply whether a firm is just focused on its domestic market or if it is also trying to reach customers in international markets. So what are the five basic ways to enter international markets? Exporting often comes first. Usually get started by working with intermediaries. They are typically specialists in international marketing and the target country. This often allows a firm to test an international market with low investment of time and money. Licensing is often an easy way as well. A licensee in the foreign market takes most of the risk because it must make some initial investment to get started. If good partners are available, this can be an effective way to enter a market. Management contracting sells know-how, relatively low-risk approach to international marketing. And this can be especially important in developing nations or ones where the government is less stable. Joint venture increases involvement. 
Sometimes this is the only way a firm can enter a new market. Direct investment involves a big commitment and usually means greater risks. So now you should be able to understand what product classes suggest about place objectives, understand why some firms use direct channel systems while others work with intermediaries and indirect systems, understand how and why marketing specialists develop to make channel systems more effective, understand how to develop cooperative relationships and avoid conflict in channel systems, and know how channel members in vertical marketing systems shift and share functions to meet consumer